Hi, I'm the Drink Pro, and today we're drinking Cast Strength Whiskey Barrel Rye from Houston. Hey everyone, Kyle the Drink Pro, thanks you all so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, click the bell for notifications, it helps me out immensely. If you like the show, I've also got a Patreon account and the link's in the description. It's got great original content out there that you can't find anywhere else, including videos, posts, photos, and discussion with me. There's also an opportunity to vote and pick out what reviews I'm going to do next. If you see something on the shelf I haven't opened or tried, we might be able to pull that off. And it's a great chance for you to join the community of drinking professionals. Today, I'm trying a sample I actually picked up a long time ago and I've been neglecting to taste it. A very generous guy named Tracy Lee sent me this sample after posting in one of the Facebook groups a photo of a bourbon and said he just couldn't start to like it. He couldn't get his hands around it. He said it was just too hot, too much for him. I don't blame him. It's 70% alcohol. It's actually what's considered hazmat. Now hazmat is a federal designation for alcohol. When a liquid is over 70% alcohol, it's considered a hazardous material and that comes with certain restrictions. An easy example is you can't put it on an airplane in any context, not even in a little sample bottle. It is a hazardous material. And there's kind of a, almost a fetish around hazmat whiskeys as they're called, but People who really are proof chasers love to find hazmat whiskeys. Part of the reason I'm tasting this now is I've just seen that my local liquor store has made a pick from barrel that's actually even higher proof than this. I believe it's over 75% alcohol, which is kind of unbelievable. I really want to get my hands on it. I don't know that I will, because it is going to be hard to find. People that are proof chasers are going to jump at the opportunity to try something that hot. Since I found a barrel pick from Tracy that was 70% alcohol, I thought I'd give it a try and see how I felt about it, because it is still barrel, which is the same company that is sourcing the whiskey for this pick from the local liquor store. Now this particular pick was from the Houston Bourbon Society. So shout out Houston Bourbon Society. There are societies for bourbon all over the country. I love seeing that engagement. I hope to see more engagement here locally with me in Indianapolis, but anywhere in the world really, you can form your own whiskey society and engage with these other people. And if you really grow, you can do barrel picks. I know in Indianapolis there are a couple of groups that do it, but in Houston they've got the Houston Bourbon Society. And this is a barrel rye. It's a 13-year Canadian rye. Barrel actually sources their whiskey from Canada. A friend of the show, Josh, who has suggested that Alberta Premium is actually the whiskey being sourced for Barrel, has explained that some of the Alberta Premium products are fantastic. So I'm really excited to try this. Now I fully expect to put a little bit of water in this pour because 70% alcohol is certainly nothing to sneeze at. So, Barrel rye, I don't know a lot about it except it's 13 year old Canadian whiskey. Canadian whiskeys tend to have a very specific palate and a uh, very specific nose. They're not particularly complex, or at least they're not known for their complexity, but they can be quite smooth and sweet. Whoa! Okay. What? <laughs> wow. So this is hot as shit. Uh, I guess I should have expected that at 70% and from the fact that Tracy explained in the post it was too hot for him even though he kept trying it. It is very, very hot. Lots of alcohol. Lots of rye grain on the nose. There's a sweetness. A very, a real softness too. If you can get past the alcohol, there's almost like a sweet cream component along with the rye grain, which is really interesting and unusual. I'm definitely getting vanilla on the nose as well. It's it's really hot, guys. This is almost too hot to nose. I'm going to I'm going to give myself some distance, which I typically don't do, but I just want to see if I can get something besides alcohol out of this. The softness almost comes across like like cotton candy or um Caramel corn. Oh, but if you really stick your nose in there and you can fight through the alcohol. <coughs> oh no, that's not how to do it. Okay, hold on. Wow, it's just like jet fuel, guys. Holy shit. I'm getting significant drain cleaner notes. Whoever picked this barrel, they must be a real glutton for pain. It's interesting, the notes are like nothing I've ever smelled before. It smells kind of like lemon pine sol with a mix of rye spice and honey and sugar and it's weird. 
It's a weird one. Oh, uh, if you give it some time though, you start to get some of that, the rye grain and the vegetal notes start to come out. This is like cleaning your house next to a meadow. <laughs> like you got honeysuckles and, and, and vibrant smells outside, but right now you're inside with the lemon pledge cleaning shit up. Let's give this a taste and see how it is on the palate. It's very rye grain forward on first taste. Very hot. Still interesting though. Overcoming that heat is a big ask. It is hot. I mean, I know there are flavor components underneath it, but it's hard to pick them out. It's hot even for a hazmat. I've had a couple of 138, 139s. I've never had something that was actually 140, but I've had a lot of things at that 138, 139 area that were not nearly this hot. This is fucking hot. I've had whiskeys that were sort of like red hots, where they had the spice of a, of a cinnamon burn that is different from this kind of heat. This heat is like Listerine, it is very hot. Um, this is also very hot. You can actually get a spicy heat, which is mimics more of a pepper from whiskey, but it's very rare. And when I go back to the nose after tasting it though, I get a lot of that, like a sweet lemon, which is, I usually get lemon zest, or the soured lemon, or a citrus note, but this is like a sweet lemon. It's almost lemonade on the nose. It's like rye spice, it's like a rye bread lemonade. That's not a bad day. With a little vanilla, it's starting to open up now. I've kept it open for a while, I've been spinning it for a while. I tasted it and nosed it and kind of acclimated to the heat. This feels like a barrel pick where they tasted five or six barrels at incredibly high strengths and then went to this one. You need to acclimate before you can really appreciate what's going on here, and that's a hard journey. And even still, it's pretty hard to acclimate. It is very, very hot, even for a 140. The rye grain and the rye spice in this are actually quite smooth. It's got very good rye notes. It has hints of the barrel bitter. There's a little bit of sweetness, almost a tartness too in the mid palate. There's not much finish on it. So let's go ahead and add a couple drops of water. Now I don't have very much left, so I'm only gonna add like two drops. But given how hot it is, maybe three drops. Given how hot it is, that should make a difference. Ooh, okay, it opened up. I get that geranium note now. Get geranium and honeysuckle. The rye spice is still there, but it's very quiet. The floral notes really come out of this thing. Adding a couple drops of water makes it a lot more floral, makes it a lot more um, enjoyable on the nose for me, frankly, even after acclimating. I'm not sure that the water helped it any on the palate. It made the nose more interesting. I guess it brought out some of the rice spice on the palate. The lemon became quieter, but boy, the heat is there in droves. It is really hard to get over that heat. Just because of what's been going on with this, I feel like it's time to add some more water. And you can see I have almost no whiskey left, but I'm gonna add two more drops of water. That should significantly proof it down, which um, we're getting into more of a standard issue whiskey territory here. So let's see how that affects the flavor. First off, the nose got way quieter. A couple of drops of water in the standard 70 was the perfect butter zone for the nose. Very geranium, very sweet, very rye, interesting whiskey. The taste was still too hot though. Now on the nose, it's basically nothing. It's just those same notes, but quieter. Let's taste it. Now see, I like the taste a lot more when I watered it down significantly. It's very classic rye flavor. It's sweet, it's grain, it's got a little bit of the bite still, and that heat is still there, and the woodiness is still there, and maybe even some leather, but it's more balanced and it's more tolerable. Sometimes whiskeys really are meant to be drank with a little water, even with a little ice, which is almost sacrilegious in some communities, but I think you drink the whiskey how you enjoy it. And to be honest with you, this whiskey is so damn hot, I don't think I would drink this neat. I might put it on an ice, I might put a significant amount of water in it, not a whole lot, it's not gonna be 50-50, but you know, for an ounce of whiskey, I might put in a, a quarter ounce of water, which is pretty substantial. But just to get this thing quieted down, it's gonna kill the nose, but the nose is only worth so much. If you can't drink the whiskey, who gives a shit how it smells? It actually is a really good pick though. As much as I've kind of been complaining about it, I gotta give the Houston Bourbon Society credit. It's a super interesting whiskey. It's a great example of what water can do with a whiskey and how complex a whiskey can be. And you might not be able to pull those notes out if you're not looking for them. 
that's really cool to me that they've they've made a barrel pick that you can drink three different ways and have three different experiences. I think some people would discount this and say it was a bad pick on their part. I totally disagree. But you have to think about this pick differently than a lot of standard picks. It is incredibly hot. It is very complicated. But it's something that you can enjoy in different ways. Part of the impetus for this review was to find out if I wanted to pick up the, this local pick from Barrel that was going to be at 75% or whatever ungodly number it was. I think I will, because I want to see how it compares to this, and I want to see what happens when I put it on ice. I actually like drinking whiskey on ice from time to time, but almost none of your standard issue whiskeys can hold up to it, because that really does inhibit the flavor. The coldness changes the flavor, it mutes a lot of things, the water does the same thing. This whiskey could hold up to an ice cube. And so now I'm thinking that the one that's coming from my local store will hold up as well. I hope to pick it up. I hope to get the chance. But if not, hey, maybe somebody will share a sample with me. If you want to share a sample with me, reach out to me. I'm happy to try new things. I love talking to people. We Maybe we can swap samples and get something going. However you want to do it, keep drinking like a professional, guys. Cheers.